Hello and welcome to the Night Sky in a Telescope, a YouTube channel devoted to helping you explore the night sky. This month, Mars continues to dominate the evening sky while Mercury joins Venus in the pre-dawn twilight. The Leonid meteor shower reaches its maximum in the early hours of the 17th and will finish the month with a penumbral lunar eclipse on the 30th. You can find Jupiter and Saturn in the south-southwest after sunset, with both planets setting between 9.30 and 10 p.m. on the 1st. That's about four and a half hours after the sun, but that time will drop to about three hours by the end of the month, with the pair sinking below the horizon at around 8 p.m. Jupiter appears to shrink slightly from 37 arc seconds to 35 and dims a little as well, from magnitude minus 2.1 to magnitude minus 2.0, but the chances are you won't notice it. Saturn, however, remains the same throughout the month, at magnitude 0.6 and with an apparent diameter of 16 arc seconds. Meanwhile, the gap between the two planets continues to close. There's 5 degrees between them on the 1st, with the distance dropping to 2.25 degrees by the end of the month. That's about 8 full moons. You'll find a waxing crescent moon to the lower right of the planets on the 18th. Come back the next night to see the moon at almost the same distance, but this time to the left. Neptune is already high over the southeast by the time the sky is dark and won't set until the early hours of the morning. It remains close to Phi Aquarii and can be spotted within the same binocular field of view. Mars remains a brilliant sight throughout the month and can be found rising in the east shortly after sunset on the 1st. It will be due south at 10 p.m. on that date, 9 p.m. on the 15th, and then around 8 p.m. on the 30th. The planet was at its best last month, and is quickly beginning to diminish in brightness and apparent diameter. It was magnitude minus 2.6 and 22 arc seconds in diameter at opposition on the 13th, and starts November at magnitude minus 2.1 and 20 arc seconds. By mid-month, it will be magnitude minus 1.7 with an apparent diameter of 17 arc seconds. It will be just magnitude minus 1.2 and 16 arc seconds by the end of the month. Realistically, this means November is really your last chance to catch the planet at its best, as it will only grow dimmer and smaller as the Earth continues to move away from it. A waxing gibbous moon appears to the lower left of Mars on the 25th. Next up is Uranus. It reached opposition on Halloween, but when you're talking about a planet that's nearly 2 billion miles away from the Sun, it doesn't make a lot of difference. All the same, it's visible throughout the entire night and can currently be found in the barren southern area of Aries the Ram. If you want to try your luck, it might be a good idea to use an app such as Sky Safari or Mobile Observatory to help you identify it, as it can be easily mistaken for a star. Try scanning the area about midway between Menkar in Cetus and Mesarthim in Aries with binoculars, and may the odds be ever in your favour. Venus is slowly slipping closer toward the Sun, and can be seen in the pre-dawn twilight. It rises about 3 hours before the Sun on the 1st, and then about 2 and a quarter hours on the 30th, giving you plenty of time to enjoy our nearest planetary neighbour. It remains a brilliant magnitude minus 4 and starts the month with a disk 13 arc seconds in diameter and 82% illuminated. By the end of the month, it will be 12 arc seconds and 89% illuminated. Venus starts the month in Virgo and will pass by Spica, the constellation's brightest star, from the 15th to the 19th, with the pair being closest on the 17th. The planet then crosses the border into faint Libra on the 26th. Venus is joined by Mercury in the morning sky for most of the month. You can catch it low over the east-southeastern horizon at about 30 minutes before sunrise on the 1st. Look out for the stars Arcturus and Spica nearby. It reaches greatest elongation on the 10th, when it will be 18 degrees away from the sun. Look for it to the lower left of Venus and Spica about 45 minutes before sunrise. It will shine at magnitude minus 0.5, making it relatively easy to see. Two days later, and the waning crescent moon appears just above Venus, while a day later, on the 13th, it hangs directly above Mercury. This can help you to find the planet in the twilight. You'll probably still be able to spot Mercury until around the 20th, but it's rapidly sinking towards the horizon by that time. Telescopically, 
It's 16% illuminated and 9 arc seconds in diameter on the 1st, 58% illuminated and 7 arc seconds on the 10th, and then 85% illuminated and 6 arc seconds in diameter on the 20th. In terms of the Moon, it's last quarter on the 8th and then turns new on the 15th. It then reaches first quarter on the 22nd before turning full among the stars of Taurus on the 30th. Incidentally, this month's full moon comes with a bonus. There's a penumbral lunar eclipse which should be visible throughout North America. A penumbral eclipse occurs when the moon passes through the outer portion of the Earth's shadow. The moon might appear a little dimmer than usual, but you might not notice anything at all. The eclipse begins at 2.32 a.m. Eastern Time on the 30th, or 11.32 on the 29th if you're in the Pacific Time Zone. Mid eclipse is at 4.42 a.m. Eastern Time, 1.42 a.m. Pacific, and the eclipse ends at 6.53 a.m. Eastern and 3.53 a.m. Pacific. This image depicts the view from Kansas City, but the view from elsewhere in the United States would be something similar. Lastly, November has one more noteworthy event for sky watchers. The Leonid meteor shower reaches its maximum from the evening of the 16th to the early hours of the 17th. With the moon a crescent in the evening sky, it will be well out of the way before the meteors are at their best in the hours before the dawn on the 17th. Leo starts to rise at about 1am in the east, but you're more likely to see some shooting stars towards the northeast or southeast. The Onids are known to be fairly bright and, under ideal conditions, you could expect to see about 15 an hour. That's it for this month. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button and feel free to comment below. If you're interested in my books, you can find them at tinyurl.com forward slash rjbamazon dash us and if you'd like to come join the Stars and Stuff Facebook group, you can find it at tinyurl.com forward slash SNS Facebook group. Lastly, you're more than welcome to email me at astronomywriter at gmail.com with any questions you might have. Thanks for watching, and until we meet again, clear skies to you.